Okay, so this next example actually is going to follow exactly the same idea as the previous one. Um, the only change is that because we have now x squared, we've got to do a little bit more work. Okay, so what tends to happen in integration by parts is that you often need to do it more than once, right? Sometimes you get lucky, and after a single step of doing integration by parts, you get to an integral where you can immediately write down the answer. Sometimes there's still some more work involved, right? So we still follow this idea that generally, if there's a power function, that's what we want to be our u, because when we take the derivative, the power goes down, and that makes things simpler. That makes this our dv, okay? So if u is equal to x squared, that means that du is 2x times dx, okay? And if dv is cos x dx, then v must be sine x, same as it was over there, okay? So this becomes, so the first one we want to do, right? So remember what we want is we want uv, and we want the integral of v du. So u times v is going to be x squared sine x minus the integral of v du. So v is sine x times 2x times dx. Okay. Aha. So the 2 is a constant. We don't really need to worry much about that 2. We can bring the 2 out front. So let's take that 2. We bring that out front. And we realize that we have x times sine x, which is going to follow pretty much the same script as this x times cos x. Right? We want this to be our new u. And we want this together with that to be dv, right? So u is going to be x, du is dx, okay? Uh, and if dv is sine x dx, that means that v must be negative cos x, okay? So, this first term just stays put, x squared sine x, we're done with that, minus. Put those parentheses in right away so you don't forget them, otherwise you're going to run into sign errors, right? Um, biggest thing that's going to go wrong with multi-step integration by parts is you don't keep track of the minus signs, right? Because there are minus signs introduced at every step, possibly more minus signs. You got to be careful or you're going to get a sign error and it's going to mess everything up for you, okay? So, uv in this case is minus x cos x. Minus x cos x, okay? Subtract integral of v, which is minus cos x times dx. Okay, didn't make that quite wide enough. dx. Right? Okay, so let's, let's take care of minus signs here. Minus, minus becomes plus, minus, minus becomes plus, leaves me with one minus sign. So all told, I have x squared sine x plus x cos x, okay, minus the integral of cos x, and we know what that is, it's sine. So we have x squared sine x plus x cos x minus sine x plus c, okay? And you're done. And of course, if you're, if you're worried that you might have made a sine error along the way, um, which is entirely possible, remember that you can always check your work with antiderivatives, right? Because if it's an antiderivative, if we take the derivative, we should get the thing we started with, right? Let's check. 
So if I take the derivative of x squared cos x plus, or sorry, x squared sine x plus x cos x minus sine x, what do I get? Well, in this first term, I get 2x derivative of x squared times sine x. Ah, I lost something, didn't I? I already, see, this is why you check your work. Forgot about the 2. Forgot about the 2. 2, 2, 2, 2. Haha. -ha. Now we'll be all right, I think. Okay, so we get 2x sine x, and then we get x squared cos x. That's product rule derivative of the first term. Coming to the second, derivative of 2x cos x. The derivative of 2x is just 2, so I get 2 cos x. Derivative of cos is negative sine, so we get that. And then finally, the derivative of minus 2 sine x is minus 2 cos x. And let's check. 2x sine x cancels with 2x sine x, 2 cos x cancels with 2 cos x, and leaves me with the thing I want. Okay?